welcome aboard to the greatest chipset comparison in recorded history. We read through all of your comments on our first comparison, and after thoughtful consideration, we're back with a new and improved video which includes the Kirin 9000 along with a fan favorite, the Dimensity 9000. On top of the extreme test from the previous competition, we'll be adding on a couple of other interesting trials all to keep you entertained. But that's not all. We're also going to be including an infrared thermometer to check the temperature of the devices while they're wrestling with these tasks. I think that's pretty much everything you wanted to see from us, so let the facts speak. Just so you know, we're doing a big giveaway of the latest iPhone, Galaxy and Pixel flagships, so check out the link in the description to not miss a chance to win. First things first, a quick recap of what we got here. You see this? Good. This is where you can keep track of the timer of each respective chipset. This is our newest addition, the temperature of the phone. And lastly, over here is where you can see the battery percentage. Now ready your popcorn, grab a drink, and lean back. The kickoff will be with Adobe Lightroom, which is a professional image editing software. It also features a variety of tools for processing and storing a large number of image files, making it more efficient for those who edit many photos at once. We're keeping our standards up by using 50 JPEG and 50 RAW files for our Lightroom tests, and we've prepared a preset specifically for these photos. Applying the preset to the photos was the first step, and to be honest, there was a lot of back and forth at some point, but surprise surprise, Samsung's Exynos finishes this test first with a mind-blowing speed of 17 seconds. Snapdragon, reliable as ever, takes second place with 26 seconds. Google's very own Tensor is third at 35, with Dimensity coming in right after it 37 seconds. Interestingly, Bionic is fifth with 52 seconds, and the Kirin will come in last at applying this preset at exactly one minute. And by the way, it would really make us happy if you could like this video and subscribe to us to give our channel a little push. Now that the easy part is out of the way, let's get down to the good stuff and hit that render button. Temperatures are flaring, and it's getting hot in here, uh-huh. Even computers would have a hard time with this, as you need a high-end gaming or work PC to be able to finish these tests in a short amount of time, but from what I see, these chipsets are pedal to the metal, and let's hope they all make it to the end without overheating. Keep your eyes on those temperatures. And it looks like one of these chipsets is actually breaking away from the rest, and the winner is ding ding ding! First place goes to Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 at 6 minutes and 24 seconds. The extremely close race between the contestants continues, but the Dimensity 9000 will be taking the second place seat with 8 minutes and 20 seconds with the Exynos 2200 coming in right after at just over 9 minutes. The A15 Bionic had a slow start so it will be crossing the line in 4th place at 9 minutes and 30 seconds with Google's Tensor taking 5th place at just over 10 minutes and 12 seconds. Kirin is unfortunately not able to make the cut like we recently witnessed and will take last place with almost 17 minutes needed to finish the render. That was just the start we were looking for guys with a lot of excitement and close results. It seems that at first glance, even though the A15 Bionic is an amazing creation, it doesn't get along the best with Adobe Lightroom. So the best thing we can do is to see if this is a trend or not is hop into Adobe Premiere Rush. Rush is a simple video editing platform for desktop computers and mobile devices. It has basic tools for trimming and combining clips, also adding text and music. So what we're gonna do with this good looking app is create a timeline with a 4K video that is 1 minute and 6 seconds long. Sound familiar? Probably yes, once I tell you that there's also going to be some b-roll involved. Is that all though? No way. Sprinkling some graphics animations on top will be similar to the cherry on top of the cake, as we want to push all of these chipsets to the limit. While doing this though, the Galaxy S22 Ultra with the Exynos 2200 bugs out and stops working. Numerous fixes didn't solve this issue either, as we had to accept the two of them being incompatible and move on. Shortly after this dilemma though, the head-to-head -head competition between the A15 Bionic and the Dimensity 9000 comes to an end with Apple's Bionic chipset crossing the finish line as the victor, taking down Adobe Rush in 1 minute and 18 seconds. Dimensity, as I just mentioned, is gonna be coming in second at 1 minute and 39 seconds. While it was also close for the bronze medal, Snapdragon and Tensor will follow up as third and fourth respectively at 2 minutes for Snapdragon and 2.20 for the Tensor, with Kirin unsurprisingly lagging quite behind the competition, finishing the task at 5 minutes and 21 seconds. I guess Adobe apps put a lot of pressure on the Kirin chip, which kinda reflects on the results. And while Adobe is a cornerstone of video and photo editing, chipsets need to be designed for much more. Enter Microsoft Excel. I bet you never thought that Excel could be turned into a test. I also mentioned in our previous video that this isn't exactly something that will push a processor over the edge, and that is why we're using a super, duper, special, ultimate Excel file, which has a grand total of 60,000 lines. 
Even then, results are coming in at high speed, so there's no way to know who will be first as there are just seconds between each device, and first place is Apple's Bionic in 7 seconds, with Tensor surprisingly coming in second after 10 seconds. Machine learning anyone? Snapdragon is consistent as ever at third place with 12 seconds, as Dimensity and Kirin come in 16 and 19 seconds. Exynos will round things up with 21 seconds required. These results aren't all too different, and let's be real, you won't be complaining about any of these chipsets, at least in this test. However, sometimes it's the small results that matter the most, so it's time to take on the benchmark test of the ages, starting off with Geekbench. I especially like these tests because they're specifically designed to put pressure on the SoC and are guaranteed to present us with exciting results. It's definitely one of the most important apps out there that test the functionality of devices as it benchmarks the central processing unit by modeling real world tasks. Its ability to reflect what actual users face on their mobile devices makes it shine. What I really like about Geekbench is how it splits the single and multi-core scores up because multiple cores allow devices to run multiple processes at the same time with greater ease, increasing your performance when multitasking or even when using powerful apps and programs. The results are flying in, and let's take a look at the single core scores first. The winner is the consistent A15 Bionic with 1753 points with seemingly its greatest rival, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, right behind it at 1201. Kieran and Dimensity won head to head for the third place finish, but Kieran was able to edge it out with a score of 883, with Dimensity landing in at fourth with 831 points. Exynos will come in fifth this time at 648, with Google's Tensor rounding up the standings with 631 points. The multi core is arguably the more important of the two, and we do see some shifts towards the bottom of the list, so let's take a closer look. This test was quite rough on some of the phones, so just to let you know, we take breaks between each test to ensure fairness of competition. Our records say that Antutu is next on the list. It's a benchmarking tool that is divided into multiple phases with the majority revolving around 3D animations. You can see these phases as well as their explanations on the displays of the phones while Antutu is working its magic. There's a small piece of information that I do need to share with you before we talk about the results though, as the ones on the iOS are incomparable to the ones on Android. As stated on Antutu's website, there are differences in the kernel and the development language used by both systems, as well as the separate versions using different APIs when running the GPU test. Nevertheless, we're going to be giving you all the results just so you don't have any question marks left in your head. And the results are going to be as follows. Snapdragon has overtaken the competition by being just shy of a million points, which is a really hard feat to achieve. Dimensity grabs a silver medal by getting 906,926 points, and the bronze will go to Exynos with 854,996 points. Apple's Bionic is fourth with a score of 766,328, with Kieran and Tensor finishing up the list at 553,782 and 443,113 points. So what do you guys think of the results? We're going quite straightforward, so how about I throw a curveball in the form of Geekbench ML? What is this? Well, Geekbench ML uses real-world machine learning tasks to evaluate mobile inference performance. It measures your CPU, GPU, and NPU to determine whether your device is ready for today's and tomorrow's cutting-edge machine learning applications. Just for those who aren't aware, NPU stands for Neural Processing Unit, which is a microprocessor that specializes in the acceleration of machine learning algorithms. Artificial intelligence is in the house, and now in your mobile phone. The tests range from image classification to machine translation, and the results are sure to be interesting since this test isn't necessarily known to be part of the big three benchmark names. And it looks like the A15 Bionic is off the charts, comfortably taking the gold medal with a score of 954, with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 behind it with almost half the points at 507. The Exynos 2200 looks to be showing some class by putting up a fight, and will take third place with 325 points, and the Dimensity 9000 will take fourth with a score of 283. The Google Tensor got 262 points and will overtake the Kirin 9000 by just one point which looks to be too close for comfort. Remember, you should take this test with a grain of salt because chipsets aren't fully optimized for AI in 2022 and this test might not show incredibly accurate results. The whole point is to show you as many legitimate tests as possible and currently, when I check my list, I can see that we arrived at 3D Mark. This test over here determines the performance of a phone's 3D graphic rendering and CPU workload processing capabilities. 
case. As it is the case most of the time, higher numbers indicate better performances. Since these are all flagship devices with top of the line processors, the test we've chosen is the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. The word extreme does play a part here, at least for Dimensity and Snapdragon, as they seem to be heating up quite a bit compared to the lower and stable temperatures of Kirin and Bionic. So we'll definitely have to see how this factors into the results. Are they heating up because they're working faster and better? Or is it because the other two are better optimized? I have a feeling we're about to find out. The results as usual will be separated between the best and the lowest loop out of the 20 loops that the application runs, so that we're also able to grasp just how consistently the chipsets are able to run these tasks. Speaking of consistency, Bionic is getting pretty good at that and has achieved a high score of 2866, and even though Dimensity was causing issues for Snapdragon, their head to head will end with Snapdragon getting 2360 points in comparison to the Dimensity's 2295. Exynos has 2056, while Tensor has 1815, and Kirin once again looks to be unable to keep up with only 1286 points. In the case of the lowest loops, Bionic and Snapdragon have achieved 1893 and 1450 points respectively respectively, with Exynos at 1,284 points, swapping places with Dimensity sitting on a score of 912. Kirin and Tensor have also swapped places, and I do remember the Tensor having a low stability score from our last video, because their SoC has issues staying at the same standard over time. 886 for Kirin and 788 for Tensor will round out the lowest loops. So is that all? Not quite. We're not holding back this time. Basemark Web 3.0 is a comprehensive web browser performance benchmark that tests how well your mobile or desktop system can use web-based applications. This benchmark includes various system and graphic tests that use the web recommendations and features. Basemark Web 3.0 measures real-world client-side performance to detect browser bottlenecks. This ought to be interesting, but what I don't get is why the temperatures are increasing at all. It's just some basic tests on Google Chrome. This doesn't really fill me with confidence, you know what I mean? But what I do know is that the Bionic disagrees with me by doubling the points of Snapdragon and grabbing that first place spot as Dimensity, Tensor, Kirin and Exynos have lined up to take 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th place. And we have finally reached the end of the greatest chipset comparison of all time. Checking out the batteries, I see that the A15 Bionic equipped iPhone 13 Pro Max has 76% left, while the Oppo Find X5 Pro with a Dimensity 9000 has 75%. The Galaxy S22 Ultra with a signature Exynos 2200 has 73% battery, while the Kirin 9000 equipped Huawei Mate 40 Pro is 1% below at 72%. Google's Pixel 6 Pro and Tensor have 70% left, with the Motorola Edge 30 Pro and the Snapdragon HN1 having 65% battery at the end of all of these tests. Even though it has stock Android, it still drained more battery than the others, which is an interesting fact. Now that we've crossed the finish line for good, let's check out this overview of the tests. Exynos grabbed its first and only win in the Lightroom preset, while Snapdragon was the winner of the Lightroom render test. Excel and Geekbench went the way of Bionic, and Snapdragon came back by winning the Antutu benchmark. A15 continued its run by taking the AI testing Geekbench ML, 3D Mark, as well as the browser test of Basemark Web. We put an insane amount of effort into these tests, so please like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can keep pushing out new videos. Thank you guys, and have a nice day.